Well, hello everybody. It's Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube. And today I'm going to show you a blizzard because it's still winter, so we can still make blizzards, right? And this video is by popular demand from Instagram. These two new stamp sets just released from Ellen Hudson. There's the whales on the left and the Arctic Pals on the right. We're going to be looking at the Arctic Pals in this video. There's another video today with the whales. So you're going to see both of them today if you want to both Copic videos and there's this cool die that I used with the whales. So I want to show the cards to you so you'll get a sneak peek. That's what the whale cards look like. Some fun Copic underwater backgrounds. And the other one is going to be these really fun blizzards. And I'm hoping you're going to enjoy them. I did a little blizzard on Instagram and everybody just kind of went wow for it. So I said, okay, we got some more Arctic animals. Let's get a blizzard video underway. And it takes doing some fancy stamping in order to get this started. And it's kind of bad stamping, like making deliberate bad stamping, which means I can do it because I'm a terrible stamper. <laughs> so what I'm doing is taking the penguins. I'm going to do a couple cards here. The penguins in one card. And I'm leaning them sideways because the wind is blowing them over sideways and then wiping off a bunch of the ink so that they don't stamp perfectly. Since when do we want to not stamp perfectly, right? Well, now is when you want to not stamp perfectly. I'm using a baby wipe to wipe off the excess. If your baby wipe's really wet, then either squeeze it out a little bit or wipe it also with a Kleenex afterwards so that you don't end up getting any moisture on there because otherwise you'll have like a gray blob from the moisture and you don't want that. So there's only three penguins in the set, but I put, I'm put i putting a whole bunch of penguins in there in a bunch of different ways. I love the penguin who's just like waving his hand in the air. And this one, I'm going to do just the little hand, well, not the hand, the flipper, the flipper in the air. And it's just fun to sort of think of them all blowing over in the wind and in the <laughs> In the crazy blizzard. So you have fun with these. They're they're a blast to do this with. So I've got all of them stamped out. And I'll do the the bears real quickly, and then we're also gonna do the foxes. So I'll show you all three of those in the video today in the coloring. So I'm doing the same thing with the bears. I leaned them sideways and just stamped them with having wiped off part of it. Now, I did leave a little too much down there at the bottom, so I'll have to disguise that with my blizzardy snow. And the third one is going to be the foxes. And with when you're using the mini misty with it, which is the tool that I'm stamping with, with, then you can stamp a little bit and then stamp a little bit more and a little bit more. And you can kind of decide what it looks like because it's hard to be able to go left, right, because everything's opposite and figure out exactly where you want all of your ink to be and how much ink. Like here, I wasn't, wasn't sure if I wanted to have just his little nose peeking out. And I decided, no, I want to have a little more of his face, but then I got ink on his feet, et cetera, et cetera. So when you're using the Misty, you can actually just keep replacing the same stamp in the same place. And that is why I love the Misty, because it makes me a terrible stamper into a good stamper. So I have three colors that I'm going to use for the snow in all three of these. And I'll, they're all the same, but I'll show you all three of them anyway, just because it might help. What I'm doing is putting my darkest color, my B41, in the places behind wherever it looks like there's a poof of snow. So if there's a, a whole big smudge of snow in front of something, I want to put some dark color behind it because that's going to make it look like snow is poofing up front. If, if that makes sense. Hopefully it makes sense by the way I'm doing it. And I'm just doing little, not necessarily dots, short flicks, short flicks and dots kind of little squig squiggles and squidges. And then I'm using a B60, which has a little bit of a purple to it, just a slight purple. It's a very, very light color, and it works really great for snow. Going right over top of the stuff I've already got down there and adding some some wispies. And if you're going to make any, any flicks at all, make them all kind of at an angle and make them at a relatively consistent angle so it looks like the wind is blowing them. And it then it sort of just creates this motion across it. And then I'm going to use a B triple zero and just add a few little marks here and there to stretch out a little bit of color, add a little bit more background on it. But literally, you don't want to do the whole thing, the whole card front in in all kinds of crazy snow. Well, I suppose if you have more penguins to put in it, you might. But I'm just going to put a little stretch across the center of each one of the cards. It's just a partial background, but the rest of the snow would be white. And 
I think it really works. On these particular ones, I am going back into the image to throw some gray back in there. So you sometimes may need to do that if you're using solid stamps like these particular ones that are going to have some places where they, they weren't as solid as you might like them. Color little beaks, and then all I have to do is add a sentiment, and I'll show you the cards at the end. I'm going to do the same thing with the bears. Very same. Looking for the places where I want to make it look like there's a poof of snow that's coming out in front of something, and I want that snow to kind of hit that bear's neck and then poof up from there. And also putting color behind the white bear is going to make the bear look more white. So I want the darker color down there. And I, I am going to have to figure out how to disguise all that smudgy, stampy stuff that I did down there because that doesn't look so great. And it makes them look like they're stamped crooked, and I want them to look like they're just blowing over. So I'm using the same colors to, um, to kind of create that whole snowstorm going around. Switching up to that B41 again to create that distraction down in the bottom <laughs> where I'm, I have all that that little black ink. And you can go in with a white pen, but I didn't want to go in with a white pen. I love the softness of just letting the Copic marker be a thing and letting it just kind of be on the paper. And I think you kind of can't see much of it because, you know, you can't see much of that messed up stamping because the Copic is so intriguing. And I think when people look at this, they're going to be kind of wow at the sight of all the snow and nobody's going to notice that there was some funny stamping going on underneath of there. And I might even put my sentiment down there so it even further distracts from any of the, uh, the little smoogey of ink. I'm all for fixing things that go broken and go awry, right? Now this one will be a little bit different because if you do this with animals that have color in them, as opposed to the penguins and the bears, which didn't have really much color in them, you need to put just a little bit of color in the place where the thing is out of the snow, whatever the animal is, is out of the snow. And then anywhere where the color is going to be mixing in, you want to use a really light color. So I chose a YR00, and I'm just adding a little bit of it here and there. And even this fox that doesn't have a body stamped, I'm just going to kind of give him a suggestion of a body. And that's going to help it look like it's snow. And I'll take that darker B41 again and just start scribbling in in the places behind where there's poofs of snow, repeat myself, <laughs> sound like a broken record repeating myself, and then start softening that out with the B60. It's a really pretty color, this B60. It's a blue, but it's not really a blue. It's got a little bit of purple in it, but it's not enough to be a blue violet. Because some of those blue violets are much stronger in color. This is kind of a duller color. And it's, it's probably this color because of the six, which means it's desaturated. So it's a really desaturated bluish color. But then again, you would think that the B9s would be gray or purple or something if that was the case. So I don't know. B60 is just a randomly oddball color. There you go. Your Copic lack of knowledge for the day. All right, just add the B000 around them. And then I threw some sentiments on them. I took each panel and put them, popped them up onto blue card bases and leaving just a little bit of the blue card base showing. And they came out really, really fun. If you want to go pin these, head over to my blog and check them out over there. There's individual ones so you can see them a little bit closer. And I will see you in the other video, which is here on the screen, so you can go click on that one to see video number two for today. And I will see you later on. And I'll, I hope you have a really great day. Thanks. Bye.